Hello and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we have a new tutorial on this animation. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel to support us in making more tutorials. And we recently also launched our Patreon with different tiers to get access to all our touch designer files exclusive online meetups to learn together, access to our online tools and more. I will leave the link in the description box in case you want to have a look. For this tutorial we're going to use the RayTK library. If you haven't heard about this library yet, I will link another tutorial we did on it in the description box as well as the channel and github of Tect. This is the guy who developed it. If you want to see more of his work, this is the YouTube channel and this is his Patreon. For the audio reactive animation, RomD Random kindly allowed us to use his music, which is very nice. This is his Instagram in case you want to go and listen to more of his music and have a look at his cool generative art. So a big thanks to both these artists for making this animation possible. Now back to the tutorial. Once you've downloaded the library from GitHub, you can import it into Touch Designer and you're set to go. Press the Alt key and the R key on your keyboard for the palette to open and from the palette I will add a Raymarch Render 3D, which is the equivalent of a render top in normal Touch Designer. Right after it I will attach an old top and turn the display flag on. Great, now from here I will create an Apollonian SDF from the RayTK library and I will connect that to the first input of the Raymarch render. Just from these nodes alone we will get this cool crazy image. In the parameter window I will put both the S parameter and the scale to 2. If we increase the iteration parameter we can go from a simpler look into a more complex look. I will set this to 6. Now in order to make this into a tunnel animation we're going to animate the translate z parameter by typing in apps time dot seconds. If this is moving too fast we can decrease it by multiplying the expression with 0.5. To make it a little more dynamic I will attach a twist operator between the SDF and the render operator. Right now it's looking a little squished since it's twisting along the X axis. This will be fixed as soon as we set the axis to Z. Great, so we now have the base. In the next step we'll add a material and we see different ways of creating materials in this library. Let's see the basic material first. This one has two inputs. The first one is for the SDF. In here we're going to connect the twist. Now the twist on itself is not an SDF, but in here it's getting an SDF as an input, it's transforming it and it's returning an SDF. So we noticed here that the material can be directly applied to the SDF, whereas in Touch Designer you can only apply a material to a geometry. The second input of the material is for use color field. In here I'll connect a texture for now, but you're welcome to try out and experiment with other texture fields. The texture field allows us to bring a touch designer top and use it as a texture. So let's see, I can create here a noise top, attach it to a null and drag the null and drop it onto the texture parameter of the texture field. Set the extend node parameter to mirror and from here we can go to the parameter window of the noise and toggle off the monochrome option. Go to the transform tab and set the scale to 0.01. If this is looking too bright, we can go to the material and in the parameter window decrease the sky amount and the specular amount. In here, if you want to bypass the material, just toggle off the enable option. I will leave it like this so we can see another material. Let's create now the Gooch material. Not sure how this is pronounced, but I will just stick with Gooch and hope I don't embarrass myself. Anyways, this material has some slightly different shading and I will connect this into the network and uh, we notice that this has some blue and yellow shading, but you can of course change the colors. I will also bypass this for now and we'll see another way to create a material, which is with a modular material.
we're going to connect the SDF to the first input and in here we don't see anything and this is because we need to attach contributions to the next inputs. In the palette we have different contribution operators and we can attach more than one simultaneously and play around with the parameters. So we see there are different ways for us to work with the material. You should explore these operators and see what's possible. For now I'll disable the last one and I'll go back to the basic material and enable that one. Now we have all this, I want to change the colors and I want to make the color changing audio reactive. For this we'll add a level, a ramp and a noise. At the end we'll add an edge and a cross between the edge and what we have before that and we will make the cross audio reactive. Ok, so let's do this. I will create first an out and move it all the way to the end of the network. Then let's right click on the connecting line between the out, go to add parameter and we'll attach an edge operator. After the edge, let's attach the crosstop. In order to make the edge more opaque, let's go to the parameter window and toggle on comp over input. And now with the cross, we notice that if we go all the way to 1, we get the white edges between the shapes. And if we go all the way to 0, the edges disappear. This constant change between the two states is a good candidate for being audio reactive. Right before the out, I'll attach a level and later on we can make one of the parameters here audio reactive. Right click on the connecting line between the cross and we'll add a lookup top. Right click on the second input of the lookup and attach a noise. In the beginning it will look crazy but don't worry, we'll fix that. But first, we'll set the same resolution by attaching the null to the noise and in the parameter window go to output and set the RGB parameter to noise. Go back to the noise tab and toggle off the monochrome parameter. Go to the transform tab and set the scale for all three directions to 0.08. Go to the noise tab and in here we can tweak the parameters and we can also animate the period to be audio reactive. So let's do it, let's import the sound from ROMD into our project. We open the Touch Designer palette and under Tools we're going to add the audio analysis and connect the audio into the first input. Right click on the out of the audio analysis and attach an old chop. Now in here we can see how the highs of the audio are changing. We're going to use the highs to make the animation audio reactive. For the changes in the animation not to be so abrupt, let's go to the parameter window of the audio analysis and set the high smooth value to around 0.221. In here you can further analyze the audio and tweak the values or choose another channel to create a more sophisticated animation to animate the cross and the level. But for now I'll just use the highest channel. So let's go to the null, put it viewer active and drag the high channel, drop it onto the period parameter of the noise and select chop reference. Now the period is too low to begin with so I'll go plus 1 and to have a more visible reactivity I will multiply the expression with 10. Now 
I will repeat the same process and drag the high channel, but this time drop it onto the cross parameter and select chop reference. Let's go ahead and multiply the expression with 2. Now at some parts the highs of the audio are more subtle and this will cause the animation to flatten and at some other parts the whole thing will be more intense. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the third parameter, this time with the brightness of the level. Since the brightness in here is very low to begin with, we get this effect and for some audio reactive animations you might want a similar effect where on some parts the animation fades to black and when the sound changes it appears again, but for now I will go to the expression and add 0 0.8 to make the whole thing brighter. Now we have the audio reactive feedback, we can try and change some values in the level to get the colors we want. Now for the rendering we'll add a movie file out first and in the parameter window we have to add an audio chop. For this we will need to add an audio file out. So let's right click on the connecting line after the audio file and connect an audio file out and drag and drop it onto the audio chop parameter of the movie file out. From here we will turn the real-time flag off and we want to record the animation once through the timeline since the beginning of the song until the end. For this we'll need to find out the length of the song in frames. So let's create an info chop, drag and drop the audio file onto the info chop and if we zoom in we can see the file length in frames is 3518 frames. We will put this number on both these parameters on the bottom left here so that the timeline will adjust to the same length. Now go to the parameter window of the audio file and we want to set the play mode so that the audio is locked to the timeline. So right now if we start at the beginning of the timeline that's where the beginning of the audio will be. We will set the range limit to once so that the animation will be recorded until the song has played through once and then it will stop. From here go to the movie file out and we will set the SPF to be 60, the same as here. Be aware that if you choose to change the FPS from down here to 30 instead so that it matches, this will change the file length in frames as well. And then so that you are consistent with your data, you'll have to change the timeline length again. So it's easier for us to change the FPS of the movie file out. So both the FPS needs to match and the file length in frames and the timeline length need also to match. So now what I do is I hit on record and then I press play. When you're here you will notice that the audio will sound like some weird alien radio signal. Don't worry about this, this happens because the real time flag is off and the animation is being rendered in high quality. So just let the audio play once through the timeline and once it stops you also stop recording and you'll be able to find your animation under this directory, which by the way you can rename if you want to. And this was it for this tutorial, I hope you learned something useful and enjoyed watching. Let me know if you liked the tutorial or if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and see you next Friday with another tutorial, for which you can leave suggestions down below in the comments. Until then, have a good time, bye!